Well, our Gators uh, played a great game today. You know, when uh, when P. Ryan broke that 50-yard uh, touchdown on third and 20 and uh, stuck a nail in the coffin of Michigan, it was almost like taking the next step, shutting the door, um, perhaps the opening of a new era where uh, Florida is, is relevant and is contenders again. And uh, it was great. Uh, great feeling. Most of the year was a great feeling. We had the two horrible games, you know, Kentucky and Missouri were the, 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 the hideous games of the year, the unwatchable games. Um, but the rest of the year, uh, even our loss to Georgia, which was a game we were right in in the third quarter, um, wasn't that bad. So uh, Kentucky and Missouri were the miserable games this season. The rest of the year were pretty good. And uh, we had watchable football. We had games that were enjoyable, not just watchable, but enjoyable to watch. I looked forward to the games. I didn't want the games to be over. This is a year I wanted a bowl game. Last couple of years, I didn't want a bowl game. Let's get the season over with. Let's move on. Not this year. And normally in these games, I've always felt like the bowl games are kind of meaningless. You know, you win, you don't win. Not that big of a deal. This year I thought it was important we win just for a momentum um, bringing the brand back, awareness, making recruits known that uh, Florida is actually a good football program since they were, you know, in elementary school last time Florida won anything. Um, I think it's important. The only thing not going as quite as well as we hoped right now yet is recruiting, yet. Um, we're, of course, in a classic position. We're in, a, we're in the catbird seat with, with Florida State tanking this year, Miami looking almost as bad as Florida State, and uh, hopefully UCF is going to get crushed here uh, the next couple days by LSU. Not that they're a real threat anyway, certainly not in the recruiting um, field. Uh, of course, the big debate is our quarterback position, and let me just say up front, um, Felipe Franks played far better uh, than I ever thought he would, especially in this offense, which he's not tailored to. And uh, as a result, we won 10 games. Largely due to some, a lot of plays he made. There was a lot of plays he also didn't make and a lot of plays he missed. And um, he was still erratic a lot of the time. So the big question is, is this a guy that takes the next step? Is this a guy that's still the quarterback of the future? Will he improve? Because this year he wasn't good enough. Not for winning titles. This year he was not good enough. He was good enough to beat our rivals two out of three times. We want to beat them all three times. Will he improve enough to do that? That's a question for the coaching staff. And, of course, they're going to have to evaluate all these guys. My opinion the whole time was that he simply was not a good fit for this offense. And by continuing to play him, we are sacrificing the maximum potential of the offense. And at this point, I still feel that way. I'm sure there's going to be a QB battle um, over the summer and in fall, and we'll see what happens. But um, someone is going to have to beat Felipe Franks out. So if Emory Jones wants this job, he's going to have to beat him. One thing I'll say about Felipe Franks is I think he's mentally tough. And when he makes a bad play, I think he shakes it off. And they don't seem to affect him. Um, he's really emotional, in my opinion, too emotional to be a quarterback. Uh, we saw him in tears, literally in tears at the end of the game, which is great, but we didn't really win anything. You know, it, There was no titles for, for winning today. Um, so he's either uh, – he, he, he's an emotional guy. I'll just put it that way. And uh, I, I don't know if that inspires his teammates or not, but – uh, the future's up in the air with Felipe Franks, and um, the offense overall played very well today, especially against a team that was supposedly one of the best in the nation, um, especially against the run, um, top 20 in the nation against the run. And, I, you know, I had the box score up, and now it's suddenly gone. Let's take a look at the box score because uh, I think Florida was pushing – Pushing 300 yards rushing, which is really remarkable. Let's see here, 41 to 15. That is a beautiful score, I must say. Attempted 24 passes, 
24 passes and 40 runs. 40 runs for 250 yards and three touchdowns. P. Ryan 76, Frank 74, Scarlett 59. Of course, P. Ryan got his 76 yards on just six carries. Boy, what is that? An average of four, five, six yards. Over six yards a carry today as a team. Um, Scarlett also made a couple of fantastic runs. In fact, we had, if you include Tony, we had four runners that had a run of at least 30 yards today. Uh, including Felipe Franks, who had a 30-yard run. Michigan, on the other on the other hand, 31 carries for 69 yards. Wow. So uh, Patterson was kind of all over the joint, you know, for a for a veteran passer like him, he was supposed to be a lot more polished than someone like Felipe Franks, and he wasn't really. Um, Franks actually looked looked better. Uh, I thought the defense uh, played played a little bit better than we were expecting. Uh, and it was great to see uh, Chauncey Gardner get a uh, get a touchdown there at the end of the game. Um, he's a guy that I uh, was always frustrating to me in the past to watch him. Missed a lot of tackles, things like that. Man, he really had a great season. He wrapped up. He was a leader. Um, he deserved that touchdown at the end of the game. And, you know, Dan Mullen, and I'll say something about Dan Mullen. Dan Mullen was what this team needed. Whether or not we'll ever win any titles with Dan Mullen, I have no idea. But if nothing else, worst case scenario, Dan Mullen was the transitional coach that this team desperately, uh, desperately needed. And I hope he gets rewarded with a championship for the way he's turned around the mentality of the Florida Gators. Because it was a, he walked into one awful situation, a far worse situation than Will Muschamp, who by the way was shut out today in his bowl game. Big surprise, and of course Jim McElwain. Uh, McElwain walked into a bad situation and made it worse, and uh, Dan Mullen walked into a situation far worse than either one of them, and he wins ten games in his first year, something we did not think was possible after the Kentucky debacle. Uh, we had a lot of people thinking we were going zero and eight in the SEC. Instead, the future looks pretty bright. And I believe we open against Miami next year, which is going to be pretty neat. It would be great to start the season next year um, crushing those guys into the ground. Just taking another look at the box score here. You know, Felipe Franks still misses some plays he should make. And that's been the frustrating thing all year. He has some good games, but they could always be better because he misses. He misses his op he misses the open man a lot. At the same time, he'll turn around and make a gutty play, a gritty, gutty play, and uh, you never feel like the guy has any uh, any quit in him. And I got to give him total credit for that. I don't know if anyone in the box score is in the chat box that is is listening, but if anyone has any questions, please shoot them out, and I will read them here. Um, again, I'm just happy about the season, and uh, it definitely gives us a lot of stuff to talk about going into next season. I think we're going to start off next season uh, in the top 15, if not the top 10. It'd be kind of nice to get some get some respect again, have some expectations going into next year that hey, maybe it's not going to be just Georgia running away from the East next year. Um, stick our nose in there and, and take that series back. Now, whether or not we can ever take the SEC back while Saban is there, that is another question that uh, I'm not worried about now. But a lot of people have been critical of Mullen for this, this recruiting class so far. I can't criticize Mullen. He's done too much in his first year uh, for me to criticize him at this point. Um, maybe that stuff comes later. But he's... Uh, He's earned the right for me to lay off him, lay off him for now. I do have a question. Why did they hold uh, Emory Jones like they did, only to barely play him today? I think that all came down to game flow, really. The game was... It's, I mean, it, let's face it. It's obvious Mullen doesn't trust Emory Jones yet, which is understandable. He's, he's really raw. Um, I think if the game had been... If there was different circumstances in the game, I think they would have played Emory Jones more. 
Um, but for some reason, I think the game was close there for a while, and I think uh, Mullen simply didn't trust Emory Jones in there, uh, maybe not to turn the ball over. Who knows what the thinking is. But the plan was probably for him to play more than he did. It just didn't work out that way, uh, the, game, the, way, the way the game went. Question number two, do you think Mullen will go with a different quarterback even if Franks is outplayed by Emory Jones or Jalen Jones? I don't know. Now, how's that for, for insight? I don't know what Dan Mullen thinks of Felipe Franks. I don't think Dan Mullen is an idiot, and Dan Mullen watches film, and Dan Mullen watches Franks in practice. He knows everything we know. He knows Franks has a tendency to miss the big play and make a, and do some silly things, and I think he knows that Franks is certainly not the ideal quarterback for his offense. I mean, he's the one who went out and recruited Emory Jones. And he's the one who went out and recruited Jalen Jones. Guys that more fit his offense. So, if part of me does think Dan Mullen wants Emory Jones to take this job. Uh, but I think if Franks clearly outplays Emory Jones, I think he'll continue to start Franks. Which maybe it's best. If Emory Jones can't beat him out, he can't beat him out. But I, I'll just say I think Emory Jones is going to have every opportunity to beat him out. When in a lot of other situ coaching situations, uh, Franks would just be given the job. So I don't think that's going to happen. Next question. Does P. Ryan get the bulk of plays next season and can he hit 1,000 yards? I'll tell you something. P. Ryan has got to be one of the most underrated running backs in the entire nation. Scarlett shows me something too. Scarlett, man, Scarlett made that fantastic run. He he makes some terrific plays too. Of course, Scarlett, I believe, is gone. And Pirine, he's the kind of you cannot arm tackle Pirine. And he's got deceptive speed. We know about his power, but he's got deceptive speed, which he showed on that 53-yard run. You know, Pierce is waiting in the wings, hoping to get more carries. But boy, well, we know Dan Mullen likes to use multiple backs, so. Whether or not we can have a back of 1,000 yards, it's unlikely, I think, with the way Mullen spreads the ball out. I think just like it was uh, Scarlett and Pirine this year, next year it's going to be Pirine and Pierce, and they're going to split time. But wouldn't totally shock me if they both end up with seven, 800 yards. Uh, he's made it clear that he believes in the committee system among running backs. Okay, I think I saw another question in there. Do you think Trask or anyone else will be in play for the QB position at all, only Emory Jones? I doubt it. I mean, I, I think... I don't know if Trask brings more to the table than Franks. So much more to the table than Franks that he would beat him out. To me, they're similar in a lot of ways. Franks may run a little better. Uh, it's possible to Trask throws a little better. I don't know. We haven't got to see him enough. I think Emory Jones, though, is Mullen's guy. He brought him in. Um, he played him all four games this year that he could. And um, I think it's going to come down to those two uh, through the fall. Should be interesting. Should be interesting. If Mullen says that uh, Franks is the guy, then, hey, Franks is the guy. We can just pray that Franks takes another step forward. Most of us, including me, think he's hit pretty close to his ceiling, but maybe we're wrong. Maybe we're wrong. Uh, it, to me, Franks has always thought that he's a better runner than he is. A uh, classic play today was when Franks rolled out at the, at the four and Tony's wide open in the end zone, but Franks is not looking into the end zone. Franks is looking to run. Franks sees the edge, and, and Franks' is mind He's going to get that edge and get in the end zone. And he had no chance of getting that edge and getting the end zone, so he didn't bother to look down the field. And that's another problem with Franks is he thinks, he thinks he's an outstanding runner. He thinks he's Michael Vick, but he isn't. That's another frustrating thing about Felipe Franks. Let's see if we've got some uh, more questions here. Ox, does the T and T Gator stand for a transgender Gator? You know, I don't know. I don't think he's ever told us in all these years what the T stands for. He certainly acts like someone. Um, 
who is going through a lot of mental confusion. I'll just put it that way. He always has for years, so it might, but we're going to have to try to get confirmation from him. Let's see if there's any more questions here. I thought the offense, of course, the offense was the best offense we've had in a decade, but that isn't saying much. I think the offense is going to be quite a bit better next year. I think we're going to make another jump of 20, 30 spots um, in terms of the offensive rankings, maybe more. The defense is a little more of a question mark. And I think for the first time in a while, a long while, the defense is going to be a little bit more of a concern than the offense. Who is going to step up on defense next year? Are we going to be able to stop the run? Marco Wilson coming back could be absolutely huge. He was uh, sorely, sorely missed uh, all season on that side of the field. And I saw he was already running, so that's good. He's going to be ready to go um, by next year for sure. Someone said they had another question. My good buddy, Carib. Let's see. Mm, I'm, sure it was a, I'm sure it was a brilliant question, If knowing, knowing Chris. Let's see here. Question. The offensive line was better than last year, but at times they were still they still were the worst position group on the team. Where do you see them for next year? The offensive line the offensive line was significantly better than last year. And again, that's not saying much. Uh, but look at our rushing numbers. Um, look, look what we did today, for example, against a against a really good defense. The offensive line, I think. Overall, I think the offensive line is more solid with a couple of really weak points. Um, Fred Johnson, for example, yet again, did not have the greatest game. Um, well, I don't think we're going to be in the top 10 in the nation. Uh, I think this offensive line is well coached. I think there's definitely talent on the line. There's a lot more talent coming in, uh, so it's always good for depth. Um, I can't say that offensive line is going to be a strength next year, but I don't think they're going to be a weakness, and that's definitely a, a big step. I think they could absolutely be a strength two years, three years, four years from now. Um, I think the recruiting has been st strong, and it's going to stay that way. I think the recruiting is just going to – I think our 2020 class – I think our 2020 class is finally going to be where it should be, and we're going to be happy. When I, I mean ranked between fourth, fourth and eighth. That's a prediction right now, which is where it should be, which is where it was for many years. And um, I, think we're, I, think that's, I think we're going to be off and running again. I think Mullen's going to be at Florida for a long time. There's no threat for Mullen to go anywhere. I think our recruiting is going to stay stable and solid. Um, you know, how, how is Michigan recruiting right now, for example? You think Harbaugh is going to be there in five years? You think he's going to be there in three years? Will he be there next year? You know, the NFL is going to come calling over the next two weeks and offer him eight, nine, ten million a year to come back to the NFL. Yeah, here, yeah, here he is coming off two blowout losses to end the season in his fourth year. I'm sure he's tired of the he, – he's taking heat. He's probably tired of it. He hates recruiting, I'm sure, anyway. This is your chance to make more money going back to the plush NFL and put your feet up on the desk. You can lose six or seven games and still make the playoffs. I think there's a realistic chance someone like uh, Jim Harbaugh is, is gone. And by the way, everyone see Harbaugh blow off Mullen there at the end of the game? Just kind of barely acknowledged him and just, just walked off. The guy's a weirdo and a freak and a sore loser on top of it. So uh, really glad we finally uh, finally beat those jerks. Okay, any more questions? How much does this game help us close on recruiting for the 2019 class? Uh I know the pool left for the 2019 class is not that big, but there's a few... Still a few blue chippers out there. It's hard for me to believe those guys aren't already decided one way or the other. But I could be wrong. All I know is a game like this certainly doesn't hurt us. Um, blowing Michigan out is great. Florida is relevant again. Florida is in the news again. Um, high school kids are taking notice of Florida again. So I don't know what it will do to help finish it. All I know is it doesn't hurt it. I'm hoping we land a couple more of those big ones. Can we flip someone? It's unlikely. We don't see that much anymore, but who knows? Who knows? It should be an interesting way to finish. Do you see any expected coaching changes next year that could hurt us? Oh, gosh, you're going to make me – SEC. You know, are you going to make me pull up the schedule? Was well, there going to be any coaching changes in the SEC East? 
Tennessee, no. South Carolina, no. They should be in South Carolina, but there won't be. Um, Missouri, did Missouri, Missouri, Missouri gave that clown coach an extension. He sucks. They lost their veteran quarterback. Missouri's gonna Missouri's gonna go uh, four and eight next season. See who the heck else is on the schedule? Joanne Kirby Smart's not going anywhere. Not till they get nailed on probation. Hmm. Uh, nothing jumps out to me on the uh, on the coaching changes. I think the SEC is staying pretty pretty much the same. Kentucky's. I don't think anyone's hiring. Uh, what's his name away from Kentucky? He's he's overrated too. Huh. Someone tell Ox to update Pickham. I'll get around to it when I get around to it. Okay, any other questions? Let me see if I missed any here. I've enjoyed babbling on here. This is nice. How confident are you that Mullen is a long-term coach at Florida? Mullen is guaranteed to never be as bad as Muschamp and Butters. Muschamp and Butters were so bad, they forced the hand of the ADs to fire them, even if they didn't want to. Because of the buyout situation and all that crap, they don't. these guys hate to fire coaches. But they were left with no choice. So my thing is, Mullen, you know, may, I don't know if it's good or bad. We saw, with, we saw the Mark Rick situation at Georgia. Mullen's never going to be that bad. I mean, I don't, I don't see us ever losing a more than in, really, I mean, eight, nine win seasons should be the norm at worst. So to me, Mullen's going to be here at least five, six years plus. Could go on. Could go on. I mean, is Dan Mullen the kind of guy who goes to the NFL? No. Is Mullen the kind of guy that would leave Florida for another dream job? I don't think so. Where's he going to go? I mean, I think in a lot of ways, Florida was his dream job. Who knows? You know, you never know with coaches. But to me, I think I think Florida is going to be stable for a while, and I think that's going to help, definitely help recruiting for a while. Kendall Bryles at FSU. Any thoughts? I don't know if that was a question for me or not. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was amusing that a team, uh, uh, an organization that had gotten in trouble because of sexual assault stuff, stuff involving Jameis would go out and, and sign a guy who was involved in a, in, a, in a big sexual assault situation. Uh, I thought it was funny and fitting. Whether the guy can do anything on offense, I don't know enough about the guy to, to comment. Let, let me put it this way. I'm certainly not frightened. I'm not frightened of FSU at all. As long as Taggart's out there, talk about a team that's – in a complete opposite state of mind than we are right now. We're looking at uh, a great season, and the future looks is just is just shooting straight up. I mean, it's bright. And if you're an FSU fan, what do you, what kind of future are you looking into? Is it going up? No, I mean it's completely the opposite. And uh, thank God, thank God, um, the tables have turned because it's been way too long. And I'm being asked yet again about the. Starting quarterback for next year. I definitely addressed it quite a bit. Who's our starting quarterback against Tennessee if there's no injuries? Don't know. I don't know. All I know is I think Mullen will give Emory Jones every chance to win the job. He is not going to just hand the job to Felipe Franks no matter what happened this year. Emory is his guy. I think Mullen believes Emory's a better fit for the offense, and he's going to give him an opportunity. If Franks beats him out, so be it. That's where I am right there. Well, this was fun. Uh, the first time in, gosh, I don't know how long, maybe maybe since 2009 where the season was over and I was like, ah, crap, it sucks. No football. This stinks. I want our Gators to play next week. I'm being asked about future future stuff. Next year, I you know, I'm always looking to add new features, expand the board in any way I can with with new things to do. I wouldn't mind necessarily doing podcasts again if I have time for them. Um, 
and if we have a good team, it's so much easier to do that. The biggest problem with me was I started doing podcasts during the Must Champ era, and we were horrible. And then it bled over to the McAwain era. We were horrible, and I, I was, I hated the games. I hated, I hated watching them. I was miserable. What am I gonna do? Sit on, a, sit in front of the microphone and be miserable? I mean, I didn't want to listen to myself, I, and I'm not going to subject you people to it. So, just having a good team again definitely opens up all kinds of possibilities. Um, not only for me, but to bring guests back and things of that nature. And Jason Walker, I see Jason Walker's in the box. Have him on a guest uh, a few more times. Um, Clemson versus Notre Dame and Bama versus Oklahoma, who you got? I have the favorites in those, the heavy favorites. Everybody, you know, I feel the same way about Notre Dame as everyone else does. I think they're overrated like they normally are. I don't think they play anybody, which they normally don't. But not just that. I think Clemson is an extremely talented team and well-coached team, as usual. Um, I think they have a double-digit win. Oklahoma, now I – Bama favored 14-and-a-half. I th- believe I picked Oklahoma to cover that, but I have Alabama winning. Because um, even I think if Alabama gets up 30, I think even in trash time, Oklahoma's got the offense to come back and get it within two touchdowns. So – I have Bama winning, uh, but Oklahoma covering. But, you know, I really, at the end of the day, I really don't care that much. I really don't care who wins the national title, except for Notre Dame. I, I don't want Notre Dame winning the national title. If it's the other three key teams, I really don't care, although I can't really sit here and tell you I want Oklahoma to win the national title either. There's something about that conference that plays no defense at all winning it that would that would i guess that would rub me r- the wrong way a little bit it's just it only seems like half football to me you know let's play half football we're going they might as well just call it offensive football not football offensive football because they don't play defense in that conference and i don't understand why i mean uh, somebody answered me this do, do do all the great defensive recruits in the nation only go to the SEC because, you know, when, when Oklahoma and Ohio State and all these teams uh, get all these recruits, I see a lot of blue-chip defensive names on those lists, yet their defenses give up 50 points a game, year in, year out. Is it just the philosophy? I I, I don't understand it. It's it's like, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I like SEC football. Maybe they think it's boring, but I don't. Wait a minute. Here we go. This is fitting. All right. Here's this. It was a great season, everybody. A long, long offseason ahead of us. There's a lot more offseason. Going into that last year with Butters a couple years ago, that was the worst off season of my life. And um, thank goodness the um, future is bright again. Thanks, everybody. Signing off for now. <laughs>